One of my favorite hobbies is remodeling. I uh, just got done a house that was just off a lake and basically rebuilt the whole thing. Everything from the plumbing to electrical to putting in new boards, putting in a floor, hardwood floor, to putting in brand new rooms. I've done everything with remodeling. And I, well, it's funny, I'm not, my wife will tell you I'm not a finisher, meaning like the fine tooth, like drywall, I don't mind putting up drywall, but finishing it, I can't do it worth a damn. But it's the foundational things of getting a wall in, of, of getting the most, the, the bigger structure parts of it. That's, you know, that's what I enjoy the most. Uh, enjoy it because I get to see the progress. I get to do a little bit of planning and watch that plan come into effect to, to when it's finally done. So it's one of my favorite hobbies. One thing that might surprise you is that I was with my wife on an episode of House Hunters in the early 2000s. Uh, my wife and I had just moved from Virginia into Baltimore, and uh, we were looking for a house, and, and the overall setup of how to get onto the show was we did an interview and uh, did the lighting and all that stuff, and, and then we went out to different locations to look at houses. So we're on locations for about three days, and you have the film crew and the, the personalities and everything else set up. It was a really neat experience. The funny part after all this is that my wife probably says 99% of the words in the episode. I think I have like seven total words in the whole entire episode. So seven or eight, and that's about it. So, so we kind of laugh about that. Pilot, airline pilot. Um, I have a weird fascination with airports. I, I, a lot of people see them as disorganized and, and, and crazy. I just see airports themselves as, frankly, it's organized craziness. So, but also it's a window. It's a window where you can leave from one spot and go to a totally different place in another world and experience a different culture, different genre. I enjoy just the thought of being able to experience just a different location and, and those different features that, that come with that location. Being over the clouds and getting to see some beautiful things all day, it sounds terrible. My favorite TV show right now is The Orville. I'm a Star Trek fan. It, it, uh, I know there's a new Star Trek that's out, but it just it's not grounded the way I'm used to from Star Trek The Next Generation or the previous ones. And the Orville is, jeez, uh, uh, I can't remember his name. Uh, Ed Mercer is, is the character's name. Oh, Jer uh, McFarland. McFarland's brilliant. He's a brilliant, you know, uh, writer, you know, comedian, you know, decent actor. I've really enjoyed what so far they've made in the show. So being a more positive show and, you know, there's bad things that happen to everybody. How do you overcome that? That's, that's really one of, the reason, one of the reasons why I love that show. My worst subject in high school was chemistry. I, I got, I understood what was going on, but I'll be damned if I could have gotten the, the numbers behind it. I never got it to work out. Uh, that in physics, you think I'm a numbers guy being computer science. I just never got, I understood what was supposed to happen. I understood that my answer was wrong and why, but, but I didn't understand how to get to that answer. It was, it was puzzle pieces that I never was able to really get and formulate. <sighs> no, I love the labs because it gave you hands on, you know, but the labs also, if I, it's been a long time, but they're also kind of step one, step two, and I'm a logistical person. I can follow that pretty easily. But to understand how we got to that, that, that took a little bit more of an exercise or put, heaven forbid, you put a word problem in front of me for chemistry or physics, you know, I wouldn't have had a clue. So those were my two worst subjects in high school. The most influential teacher in my life, it's a little bit of a cheat, is uh, my dad and actually his best friend, Walter. Um, not my dad because he was a dad, but because he was a middle school teacher for 40 years. Uh, he used to be the old wood shop and metal shop teacher. And right around, I'd say, 90s, he noticed that his profession was changing. And he was one of the first teachers in the state of Maryland to slowly transform for his wood shop, metal shop, into computers. And I helped him with that. That was my first real thing in computer science, was getting these computers set up, programmed, you know, where he did everything from uh, internet, which was still new then, to networking, 
to hydroponics using computers to rockets, all these really, really neat things that he was able to do. And that was changing how he taught. And he realized that he needed to do that. And I, I know that for me, the way I was 20 years ago is completely different than how I teach now. Walter, his best friend, who was a reading teacher for many years, he knew he could do better. He knew that he could be more influential if he moved around a little bit and, and got his degree and, and be able to help more people. Uh, that's what I learned from him. And if I didn't have that part of it, I'd still be a high school teacher now. <laughs> so I learned that from him, is that if I move around, do some extra things here and there, that I can help more and more people. And I feel like I have now at the university level at Texas A&M. Can't really beat it.